brilliant. What's the Americans got to do with our trip? They get a different time. Usually they get after us. Hello everyone and welcome, it's Nick, uh, we're opening a box of uh, Magic the Gathering, we're at Weekend Warlords in Loughborough, um, so we're going to open a box of the new Guilds of Ravnica set, um, so this is the latest set from Magic the Gathering, uh, it's from on the plane of Ravnica, so we've been here two previous times in the story, we're back here for a third time, so original Ravnica, return to Ravnica now, Guilds of Ravnica, um, so this set contains five different guilds, contains Demir, uh, is it uh, Selesnia, Golgari, and Boros? So that's uh, Boros is red white, Demir is blue black, is it is red blue, Selesnia is green white, and Golgari is green black. Cool, so those are the five guilds that are in this Guilds of Ravnica. There's a second set to come with the re remainder of the guilds in it. So we're going to open some boosters. The cards that we're looking for Assassin's Trophy is probably the most expensive card in the set. Uh, March of the Multitudes, uh, Doom Whisperer, Pelt Collector, there's also some nice legends as well, a couple of Planeswalkers, Vraska, uh, we've also got Ral, Zarek again, is it Viceroy in there. Um, the other cards we're looking, looking for are the Dual Lands, the Shock Lands, so they're two, both land types, that tap for both colours of mana. Um, they say they're called Shock Lands because when they come into play, they come into play tapped, unless you pay two, uh, if you pay two, they come to play untapped. So that's why they're called shock lands. They do damage equal to a shock. Cool. So we're going to go. Three boosters start. are yours as normal, Nick. All right. Thank yeah. you very much, John. John from Weekend World has been very kind, telling me that I get to keep three boosters. Lovely. Thank you, John. Oh, excellent. Yes. So uh, a box, fresh box of uh, Guilds of Ravnica. So some very nice booster artwork here. We've got Aurelia. We've got Braska. We've got Ral. Uh, I couldn't possibly tell you. Uh, excellent. We're going to open some packs. Right, I need to pick three packs. So I'm going to pick this one, pick one from in here, and I'm going to pick this one. Those are the three I'm going to keep for myself, put them off to one side. We'll open those later. Right, so let's see. Um, talk briefly about what we'd like to see. Uh, let's find out what we actually find. Um, we've got a, a side camera over here to show you exactly what sort of cards we've got. I'll talk mostly across the rares and uncommons, and briefly go through some of the commons, but uh, let's talk our way through it. Leapfrog, 10th District Guard, uh, Moodmark Painter, Crawl Foragers, Goblin Locksmith, Muse Drake, Sonic Assault, Golgari Lockets, so these are a, a, a cycle of artifacts that tap for the colours of their guild, so green or black for the Golgari Locket. Pay four mana, this is hybrid mana, I'll just show you over here. So it's hybrid mana, it's, you pay green or black to pay that cost. Uh, sacrifice it, you draw two cards. So it's a sort of artifact that stays in play, it fixes your mana for you, uh, and then you can crack it to draw two cards later when you don't need that extra mana. It's quite good. Um, it's uh, pretty, um, pretty good at fixing your mana, it's pretty good at replacing itself later in the game. Right, Pitiless Gorgon. First uncommon is Inspiring Unicorn. So we'll just put an Inspiring Unicorn over here. Whenever it attacks, creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. So uh, Boros, you probably want to make a lot of soldier tokens. Boros is the uh, the guild of the army on Ravnica. Uh, so this is going to power up your uh, your guild worth of uh, Boros soldiers. So Thought Erasure, a Demir card. So this has got Surveil. Surveil's the Demir mechanic. Surveil 1 says, uh, look at the top card of your library, put that card into your graveyard and put it back on top. Um, quite useful, quite good at filtering through, also quite good at filling up your graveyard. So it says, target opponent reveals their hand, you choose a non-land card from it, that player discards that card. So you get to look at their hand, you get to make them discard a card. Quite good, um, similar to uh, Duress, uh, so Duress is a card that lets you lets you discard, for a single black mana lets you discard uh, a non-creature card from their hand. So Thought Erasure, a little bit more mana, but get to hit creatures as well. Uh, Conclave Tribunal, Convoke, Convoke is the Selesnia mechanic. You can see here actually that these cards have got a, a, a watermark on a, under the text to denote whether they're from a guild or not. So Convoke says you can tap, uh, you can help cast this card spell uh, by tapping creatures. Uh, so you can tap creatures, uh, they can reduce its cost by one, or a mana that they uh, of that creature's colour. So you can, this is four mana, but you can tap your creatures to help you pay for it. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, to exile target non-land permanent, 
an opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. So it's similar to an Oblivion Ring or other cards similar to that. Uh, but you can actually convoke, you can you can tap your creatures to use this, it's quite good. Uh, it's a target per non land permanent as well, so all those planeswalkers, pesky planeswalkers your opponents play, those sort of things, it's quite good, I quite like it. Uh, risk factor, so this is our first rare, target opponent may have risk factor deal 4 damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw 4 cards, draw 3 cards, sorry. So this is very similar to a pre an older card called Browbeat where your opponent can tap it till 5 to them, and if you didn't, you would draw 3. So it's very similar to Browbeat. This is an instant though, whereas Browbeat was a sorcery. Uh, it's good. Browbeat wasn't, didn't see all that much play. Um, often the, the your opponent will go, oh, okay, I'll just take the 4. Uh, often they'll go, oh, okay, I'm near close to die, you have 3 cards. It's like, eh. it might see a little bit of play in a burn deck. It might not. Uh, I don't think this card is all that powerful, um, but it is quite fun. Okay, so also in the pack, we don't have a basic land, but we do have a Golgari Guildgate. Just put the res here so we can see what we've got. Golgari Guildgate, so it's replaced the basic land. Um, so the basic land can be replaced by a Guildgate. This is because there's a lot of multicolored spells in this set, and when you're drafting or playing sealed, you're going to need that color fixing from these sort of lands to help you cast your spells. Cool, so we've got a Golgari Guildgate, risk factor, nice stack of uh, commons, and nice stack of uncommons. So we're going to keep cracking packs find out what we get. So I'll put Risk Factor over here, that was our that was our rare with the commons. So let's crack on. Next pack, let's see what we get. So uh, Collar the Culprit, Deadweight. Deadweight's quite a nice uh, removal spell. It's quite good for limited. So it's one mana, target creature gets minus, enchanted creature, it's enchanted creature gets minus two, minus two. Um, so it's a lot of uh, two mana, two twos in each uh, guild, there's a two mana two two, a guild mage with certain effects. So I think Dead Waste is probably in the set just to alleviate the fact that those guild mages are quite powerful. Right, Color the Culprit, Devious Cover Up, uh, Cruel Foragers, Fire Urchin, Maximize Altitude, Candlelight Vigil, Unexplained Disappearance, Hypothesize, Skylight Nijanair, Skylight Nijanair being reprinted um, from original Ravnica. I think it's been in every single Ravnica set Boris has been in. Flying Haste, two two for three mana. Uh, nice and powerful. My friend raves about these whenever I say, oh, Ravnica, he goes, oh, I remember my deck with all the Scarlet Legionnaires in it. I go, yeah, cool. Scarlet Legionnaires, great card and limited. Uh, those fly flyers are going to get you. Also, the fact it's got haste as well. So it comes in, deals damage straight away. It's exactly what Boris is all about. Soldiers with haste. Uh, flying's excellent. Just uh, the, the, the icing on the cake, really. So our uncommons, Sinister Sabotage. Um, it's a target spell with Surveil. So this is going to replace uh, if uh, you're playing um, Cancel in any of your decks, Sinister Sabotage, it's a strict upgrade. So Surveil 1 means you can look at the top card of your library and put it into your graveyard. It's quite it's quite an upgrade on Cancel. Cancel just said Cancel Soak Spell for 3 mana. Surveil, pretty good, pretty powerful. Uh, Book Devourer, so Book Devourer says uh, it deals combat trample, it's 4 or 5, uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player. You may discard all the cards in your hand if you do draw that many cards. So it gets to replace all those extra lands that you might have in your hand. Uh, good for the late game in mono red. A reason to keep your lands in your hand when you're playing the deck. Uh, True Fire Captain. Red, red, white, white. Mentor. So Mentor is the Boros ability. Uh, whenever it attacks, put a plus one, plus one counter to target attacking creature with lesser power. Um, so I saw this at the pre-release, it was quite good, I saw a lot of Boris decks doing very well and they were like mentoring their creatures, their other creatures mentor so they could mentor their lesser creatures as well. Live chat if you need it. Awesome, thank you John. Some so we chat. can see live chat. We can interact with people, excellent. Cool, so True Fire Captain, it's also got the line of text that says it, whenever it's dealt damage it deals that much damage to a target player. So this is similar to... Um, uh, the I think it was Boros Man uh, Boros Mentor I think it was from the previous set. Um, that card was really powerful. It was a three mana three three with the game first strike, but it also had that line of text on it. It's a card that comboed with quite nicely. It's thirteen to all creatures in play, so you play it, have this in play, you do it, cast it, do thirteen to your opponent. If you're two in play, you do twenty six. That's probably enough to kill them. Right, our rare. I'm going to put these cards over here. Our rare for the set. For this pack, sorry, is Divine Visitation, and we've also got a Selesnia Guildgate as well. Uh, so Divine Visitation is a mythic, we've opened a mythic. Enchantment, if one or more uh, creature tokens would be created under your control, that many 4-4 four, four white angel creature tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. So it replaces all those creature tokens you make 
with 4 4 Flying Vigilant Angels. Great, so if you're making a lot of... You are right, Phil? How's it going? Um, <laughs> what's its power and toughness? Sorry, the uh, True Fire Captain. True Fire Captain is a 4-3. Uh, so it's uh, not quite as... It, it's more powerful than the previous one, the uh, Boris Mentor. So, uh, Divine Visitation is making 4-4 four, four angel, to angel Tokens. Um, it's going to be uh, quite powerful. Um, it's going to replace all those. If you're making uh, one one soldier tokens, then it's going to be replacing those soldier tokens uh, with angel tokens instead. Quite good. I quite like it. Uh, it's good fun mythic. So let's move on. Next pack. Uh, I'll try and position them a little further up as well, so you can see the the bottom of the card. Uh, I believe that might be part of the challenge. Cool, cool. Cheers, Phil. Thank you. Right, uh, so Siege Worm. Siege Worm's another reprint. Uh, it's a Selesnia card. Seven mana, five, five, with Convoke and Trample. So you can tap your creatures to help pay for it again. Uh, really good payoff for going wide in Selesnia. Uh, really quite powerful card as well. Very good in. Uh, yes, the Divine vi uh, Visitation does indeed seem very powerful and limited. You have to have the deck to go with it. I, I selected uh, Golgari when I did my pre release. Uh, and I had a Divine Visitation, I wasn't able to splash for it, cost double white, and I didn't really have enough token makers either. But it could be very, it could be very, very powerful with the right cards to support it. Uh, so continue to go through the uh, commons. Fearless Halberdier, Radical Idea, Collar the Culprit, Burglar Rat, Generous Stray, Pax Favor, Garrison <coughs> Sergeant, uh, Ledev Cat Guardian, Mephetic Vapors, so our uncommons. I'll put this mythic over here with the rares. Uh, so, flying, sacrifice it, the imp, uh, target opponent reveals their hand, you may choose a non-land from it, non-land card from it. Uh, that player discards that card, activate this ability, only time you cast sorcery. It's a flying 1-1 one -one with an ability that lets you look at their hand and take a card out of it. Cool, excellent. Boros Challenger. So, uh, a 2-3 with Mentor for 2 mana, that's really quite powerful. Uh, and then you can give it plus 1, plus 1. So you can pump it up to mentor your other creatures as well. Uh, Ion Shields, Join Shields, sorry. Join Shields, untap all creatures you control, they get hexproof and indestructible turn to turn. Nice combat traffic, instant. Uh, okay, cool. Our first our first shock land, we have a Sacred Foundry. So, Sacred Foundry is a shock land. It's going to tap for red and white mana. Uh, and it's also going to come to play untapped if you pay two. Uh, it's also a mountain of plains, so you can use a fetch land, search for it, and various other tricks as well. So, enter the battlefield, you may t pay two life if it doesn't enter the battlefield tapped. Cool, excellent. Sacred Foundry, first funny card really that we've opened. Really happy with that. Uh, hopefully we'll open some more. There's some good value in this set to be honest. Uh, right, so, Direct Current uh, deals two damage to any target and Jump Start. So Jump Start is the Izzet mechanic. So uh, Jump Start, uh, so it does two damage to any target, so it's two mana to two to anything. Jump Start, uh, you may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a, uh, a card in addition uh, to paying its other costs, then exile this card. So you can flash it back effectively. You can go, okay, so I've cast this card to do two to that. I can also just pay it its cost again, discard a card and do it again to another creature or player. So you can do four to a, uh, a thing, anything, any target for uh, six mana here. Cool. Excellent. Uh, Pretty good, uh, quite like the jump start mechanics. Pretty good and limited, it's a good removal spell. So continuing on, Wishcoin Crab, Loxodon Restorer, Barrier of Bones, uh, Urban Utopia, Rubble Belt Boar, Centaur Peacemaker, Is It Locket, Vidani, uh, Vidani Shield, Shield Mate, I might have butchered that name, Boros Locket, All right, okay. So our uncommons, Sprouting Renewal, so this makes the elf tokens, like this elf token we've got here. So it's got Convoke, uh, it's three mana. Choose one, create two, two, white and green elf knight token with vigilance, or destroy target artifact or enchantment. It's quite powerful uh, for three mana, but you get to Convoke as well, so it might only cost you two or one. You get to destroy art powerful artifacts or enchantments that are in play. And if there <coughs> are none, then you just get to make a knight instead. Cool. Excellent. That uh, probably will save some play and some uh, sideboards. Uh, so Rampaging Monument. Uh, it's an artifact creature, it's zero, 0 Trample, enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, so it's actually a 3-3 when you enter play. Uh, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, so 
put a plus one plus one counter on rampaging monument so it gets bigger for more multicolored spells to cast uh, quite thematic for the set really so here's one of those guild mages i was talking about the league guild mage this is the is it guild mage it's two mana two two so uh blue and red in this situation um they're all two mana two twos it's a cycle of guild mages <coughs> you pay four mana and tap it to draw a card like a jalem tome uh you pay x and red tap it uh, copy target instance or sorcery spell you control uh, with converted mana cost X. Uh, choose new targets for the copy. So you get to copy the spells and you also get to draw cards. Quite good, quite powerful, quite quite a lot of utility there. Uh, that's quite good. So, uh, Mausoleum Secrets, put this over here, is our rare. Uh, so, yeah, Mausoleum Secrets is one and, a, one and a black. Undergrowth. So, Undergrowth is the Golgari mechanic. It says search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the total number of creatures in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. So Mausoleum Secrets, um, quite a powerful card. Um, you get to Demonic Tutor effectively if you've got enough creatures in your graveyard, you can search your library for any card uh, if you have a, a graveyard full of creatures. That's quite cool. They're talking about this card in Reanimator and Legacy because if you've got one creature in your graveyard, you've Entombed for example, you get to cast Mausoleum Secrets and search for the copy of the card that's going to bring it back. Uh, yeah, quite cool, uh, quite exciting. Uh, it might see play in Legacy, might not. We shall see. Um, <laughs> it's got undergrowth, undergrowth, that Golgari mechanic. Quite pleased by that one. Let's keep on opening some boosters. Remember, uh, at the end of the day, all of these will be available in the uh, folders at Weekend Warlords. So if you want to pop down and purchase any of these, you can do. They'll be available for sale from Friday onwards, I believe, because that's when the set releases. So if you want any, if you, if you want to call the dibs on any, let let John know. Let the, yeah, yeah, let, the, yeah. let the team know. They can put them aside for you. However, they you can't pick them up till Friday, unfortunately, because the, uh, the the set doesn't release till then. So let's open some more boosters. So we've got Capture Sphere, Intrusive Pack Beast. Never happened. It never happened. What does this card do? It's got a fun name. Uh, target opponent reveals their hand. Choose an online card from it. All oh, right. Okay. Oh, so right, exile yeah. that card. Okay, so you get to uh, you get to choose an online card from that player's graveyard or hand and exile it. So it hates on the graveyard, it hates on the hand. That's cool. Okay, awesome. So continuing on, Iron Shell Beetle, uh, Cosmotronic Wave, Passwall Adept, Sky Nile Legionnaire again, Maniacal Rage, Goblin Electromancer. Goblin Electromancer has been reprinted. Makes your instant sorcery spells cost one less. So this is going to be quite good in one of those Is It Spell decks um, that wants to cast a lot of instant sorceries. Um, Good. It's going to make your make your let you be able to cast more spells each turn. Um, could even make some of your spells quite powerful as well. So, uh, righteous blow, uh, creeping chill is our first uncommon. Creeping chill says uh, it deals three damage to each opponent. You gain three life, and when it's put into your graveyard from your library, you may exile it. If you do, creeping chill deals three damage to each. Okay, cool. So when it's put into your graveyard from your library, so if it's milled off the top of the deck with Surveil, for example, then you get to do the ability on it, which is so three, three damage in the game, three life. That's quite cool. Justice Strike, the Boros removal spell, target creature deals damage to itself, equal to its power. So if it's got more power or to, to its toughness, or it's a square creature, right, it's got the same power and toughness, then it will kill itself. Awesome. It's quite good, actually, with that True Fire. Ah, we're seeing the combos. True Fire Captain. So you can target your own True Fire Captain to do 4 damage to your opponent as well. That's quite cool. Quite a little nifty little combo there. Uh, next card is Affectionate Indric. Uh, so when it enters the battlefield, it's a 6 mana 4 4. When it enters the battlefield, you may have it fight target creatures you don't control. So it's kind of like a removal spell on legs. It's going to kill a, a 4 toughness creature. If it's less than 4 power, then it's going to survive. That's quite cool. So what's our rare? <coughs> Gruesome Menagerie is our rare. The Boris Guildgate and the Soldier Token. So Gruesome Menagerie is a uh, five mana sorcery. Uh, choose target creature with converted mana cost one in your graveyard, then do the same with uh, for creature cards with converted mana cost two or three. Turn those cards to the battlefield. So best case scenario, you're gonna get three creatures back for your five mana. That's quite cool. Um, you're gonna get a fair amount of utility out of this. I don't know that you'll get a lot of aggression because it's one mana, two mana, and three mana. But in certain formats, those are exactly the sort of costs you need to combo off. So in modern, for example, you can get back Viscera Seer, Malira, 
and you can get back uh, kitchen things. And with those three cards, you can gain infinite life. So Gruesome Menagerie might see play in a, in a Malera deck. Cool, so moving on to the next pack. Uh, Loxodon Restorer, Deadly Visit, uh, Dead... <laughs> I'm gonna butcher this card name again. Dev Curran Descendant, uh, Goblin Locksmith, Muse Drake, Sworn Companions, Gravatic, Gravitic Punch, Rhizome Lurcher, Undercity Uprising, uh, Devious Cover-Up. Uh, I'm just gonna run through the uncommons here. Demotion. Whispering Snitch, Conclave Guild Mage. So Conclave Guild Mage, here we go, it's another Guild Mage, the Selesnia one. Selesnia Guild Mage last uh, time was absolutely mental. Um, completely broke that format. Um, Selesnia Guild Mage was so good and limited. But the new one, less so. Creatures you control gain trample turn and turn. Green and a tap. And then five mana and uh, six mana and tap, sorry, for it. Two to green and white elf knight token with vigilance. Um, still good, still gonna make an army, but not quite as uh, Powerful as the previous yeah, Lesnia Guild Mage we've seen. So our rare is Chamber Sentry, so X for a 0 0 <coughs> artifact creature. Um, so uh, 0 0 artifact creatures have been quite powerful recently. Um, we've had. Uh, <laughs> We've had some really quite powerful ones. It doesn't. It's not quite there. It's not quite the same sort of power level. So it enters the battlefield with, with a plus one, plus one uh, counter on it for each color of mana spent to cast it. So similar to Sunburst from previous sets. X tap remove X one one counters from uh, Chamber Sentry. It deals X damage to any target. So it's similar to Walking Blister, um, but it's not. You still have to tap it, which means you can only use it once a turn. Walking Blister was uh, a little bit abusive, to be honest. Uh, I did love that card, but um, <laughs> it was a little bit powerful for what it was. Uh, and then you can pay one of each colour, so Wooburg, to return it from your graveyard to your hand. So you can keep going with this card. It seems quite cool, I quite like it. It's no, it's no Walking Blister though, if I'm honest. Um, but it might see some play. Cool, let's move on then. I'll just leave that there. Move these cards around, uh, uncommon, cool. Let's keep opening some boosters. Okay, so, Burglar Rat, Prey Upon, Barging Sergeant, Demir Informant, Blade Instructor, Severed Strands, Unexplained Disappearance, Notion Rain, uh, Maniacal Rage, Pax Favor, cool. Uh, Enhanced Surveillance, Price of Fame, Glowspore Shaman, Underrealm Lich is our rare, but it's actually a mythic. Cool, so Underrealm, Underrealm uh, doing it again, so Underrealm Lich, says if you would draw a card instead look at the top three cards of your library then put one into your hand and the rest on the into your graveyard uh it's a uh pay for life under realm lich gains indestructible to um, tap it so uh instead of drawing cards you can look at the top three cards of your library put one into your hand and the rest into your graveyard so it gives you some selection uh when you're drawing cards uh and you can also pay for life to save it from being killed uh, but it does tap, so you can't then block with it after. So they can still point a removal spell at it to tap it and remove it from blocking. Uh, it's a 5 mana 4-3. Uh, it's quite a fun effect. I don't know that it's terribly powerful for standard. Um, I, I could see myself playing this in uh, in an EDH deck, in a commander deck, though. Um, I quite like it. It's quite fun. I just don't think it's all that powerful. Uh, but we'll see. I might be wrong. Um, cool. So let's move on to the next pack. Uh, so we've opened a Sacred Foundry so far. Uh, so that's our money really. Um, we'll continue to open some more packs and hopefully get something. Hitch Claw Recluse, Direct Current, Disdainful Stroke, Hunted Witness, Veiled Shade, Hypothesize, Centaur Peacemaker, Mephitic Vapors, Hammer Dropper, Goblin Banneret is our first uncommon. Uh, Mentor gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. Uh, this was quite the beating for me. Uh, Undercity, Necrolisk, Beacon Bolt. Uh, oh, we might have a foil here, uh, so I'll just move these out of the way onto the rare pile. Omni Spell Adept. Uh, so Omni Spell Adept says um, it's a five mana four three human wizard. Uh, three four human wizard. Sorry. Uh, two and a blue. You may cast an interval spell from your hand without paying as mana cost. Cool. So you get to cast one of those big spells. But if you didn't, if you didn't want to pay for it, you can pay. For Three mana, tap it, cast the spell without paying its mana cost. That's quite good if you're trying to resolve something big and scary. <coughs> so you can cheat the costs on your spells. So our foil 
maximize altitude. It's a common. Um, so target creature gets plus one, plus one, and flying till end turn and jump start. Cool. It's very nice in foil, very shiny. Um, but the, the real card out of that pack on this spell agent. Excellent. So uh, we'll put that onto one side. Those are the foils we've opened. Uh, Omni Spell Agent, I could see some play in some other formats. Being able to cheat the cost on uh, a spell is quite powerful. Uh, you look at some of the spells in Magic's history that have done similar things and they've all been really quite uh, good in some, some com com combo decks elsewhere in other formats. Um, so yeah, we'll see where Omni Spell Adept goes. I, I, I like it, it's good fun, it's definitely going to see some play in some EDH decks. It's tapping, uh, Three, three mana to tap it and play a Cruel Ultimatum without paying its mana, mana cost, that seems quite powerful. Uh, so, Iron Shell Beetle, Wojek Bodyguard, Watcher in the Mist, Healer's Hawk, uh, <laughs> Bar uh, Bartzian Bats, Wild Ceratoc, Demir L Locket, uh, Undersea Uprising, Vigor Spore Worm, Sumala Woodshaper, our first uncommon is Golgari Raiders, Thought Erasure, Hellkite Whelp, so our rare for this set pack is Unmoored Ego. So Unmoored Ego, three mana. Uh, so one a blue and a black for a sorcery. Choose a card name, search target opponent's graveyard, hand and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. Um, then uh, that player shuffles their library then draws a card for each card exile from their hand this way. So Unmoored Ego, uh, it's... Uh, is going to be quite similar to some of the other cards we've seen recently that search, pick a card, and basically ban it from that particular game. So you get to pick a card and go, okay, so you can't, you haven't got those in your deck anymore, they're going to be exiled. Uh, and then, but then they do get to draw a card for each card exiled that way. So it's to replace uh, some of the previous cards that might have rotated out. Awesome. Right, so Fire Urchin, Vidalcan Mesmerist. Parhelion Patrol, Barrier of Bones, Portcullis Fine, Cosmotronic Waves, Wave, uh, Candlelight Vigil, Rhizome Lurcher, Sonic Assault, Vicious Rumours. Uh, moving on, Night Veil Sprite in Escapable Blaze. We've got a split card, so this is the first split card we've seen. Uh, it's on its side. If you're if you're watching the stream, you might have to tilt your head to one side. Don't don't crick your neck too hard. Please. So I'll explain it to you. So you can choose to cast either either side of this spell. Uh, so discovery or dispersal. So discovery, two mana, uh, blue and a black, or one and one. Surveil two, then draw a card. Uh, okay, cool. So that's good good amount of selection. The next part is dispersal for five mana. Instantly, each opponent returns a non-man permanent they control with the highest conversion mana cost among permanents they control to owner's hand then discards a card. So that's quite powerful. So they've got a nice big expensive planeswalker in play. Then they can they'll now have to return that to their hand and discard a card. If that's if they've got no cards currently in hand then they're discarding that planeswalker. It's gonna get the biggest thing in play for each of your opponents. So it scales with multiplayer as well. That's quite cool. Um, excellent. So that's our first split card. Our rare, citywide bust, destroy all creatures with toughness four graces. So if you're playing against a big a big green deck with lots of scary monsters and dinosaurs, then citywide burst is gonna destroy all those. Cool, excellent, a nice uh, three mana as well. Three mana is pretty cheap for that sort of effect. So next booster, pass wall adept, take heart, dead weight, hitch claw recluse, rubble belt boar, disdainful stroke, whisper agent, erstwhile trooper, play, uh, gateway plaza, Wonder Vertebrae, Mulder Hulk is our first action. Oh, sorry, Wonder Vertebrae is our first uncommon. Mulder Hulk, Lava Coil. So, we've got a, a foil here. Take that out. Awesome. So, our, our, our rare for this pack is Chromatic Lantern. Till recently, Chromatic Lantern was a loss of money. Uh, Chromatic Lantern's been reprinted though, um, so it's worth a little bit less now. Uh, so, Chromatic Lantern says uh, lands you control have tap, add one mana of any colour to your mana pool. And then tap, add one mana of any colour. So what this does, it's, it's amazing for EDH. So in your five colour EDH deck, you can play a Chromatic Lantern. It just makes all your lands tap for whatever colours you want. So that's why it's been so much. Because everyone wants to play it in EDH. Excellent. So what is our foil? Our foil is Glaive of the Guild Pact. A quick creature gets plus one, plus one, plus one, plus oh, sorry, for each gate you control. It has Vigilance and Menace. So it's going to pump your creatures up for each gate you control. The gates, remember... Uh, these lands, they're, they're the, uh, the the common interplay taps, green, uh, so taps are two colours of mana to help you fix your colours. 
flavour of the gill pack's going to work quite nicely with those. But chromatic lantern, pretty happy with that. It's not as much money as it was, but it's still nice. Still goes in a lot of EDH decks. Cool. Let's continue to open some boosters. Next pack, let's see what we get. So, uh, Barging Sergeant, Disdainful Stroke, Disdainful Stroke back again, Counter Target Spell with Converse Mana Cost 4 or greater, Skyline Assault, Scout, Spinal Centipede, uh, Portcullis Fine, Commander Storm, Pitiless Gorgon, Vicious Rumors, Sky Knight Legionnaire again, Vigor Spore Worm, and our Uncommon Smelt Ward Gar uh, Minotaur, Mice of the Masses, House Skilled Mage. Oh, we've got a rare, uh, we've got a legend as our rare. Imara. So Imara is green and a white. Excuse me, two seconds. <coughs> so Imara, uh, green and a white for two. So whenever it uh, becomes tapped, creates a one-one white soldier token with life link. So it uh, sits in play. It makes more tokens. That's great. Uh, it's exactly on theme for what Selesnya wants to do. It's good utility legend. Uh, it's good legend, cheap legend as well. So it might see some play in the EDH. Cool. Let's keep opening more cards. Uh, Wary Okhapi, uh, Ornery Goblin, Demir Informant, Skyline Scout, uh, Hired Poisoner, Crushing Canopy, Whisper Agent, Erstwhile Trooper, Gateway Plaza, Selesnia Locket, Uncommons, Sunhome Stalwart, Pilfering Pilfer Imp, Glowspore Shaman, Assassin's Trophy, we did it! We opened money! We opened money. Uh, so Assassin's Trophy is the money card of the set. Oh, exactly! Thank you, John. Uh, we're happy, uh, so Assassin's Gate, a trophy. <laughs> oh, I wish it was my booster. Uh, so Assassin's Trophy is the, it's the sought after card from the set. Uh, green and a black, so it's an instant. Destroy target non-land, but it's target permanent opponent controls. So any permanent play, you can destroy it. Their control searches their library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle their library. So this is really powerful. It destroys anything, literally anything, for two mana. But they do get a land. So in decks, against decks <coughs> that are playing massive, powerful monsters, cheating them out to play, you can go, no, nope, destroy that, uh, get on with the game. You can have a basic land for trouble though. Um, Assassin's Trophy is going to give us two play in so many formats. This card is <coughs> super amazing. Um, they're currently looking like they're going to be at least $25 uh, on the secondary market. Um, so they might go up from there. If you're after it, remember it's in the folders at Weekend Warlords. Uh, give us a shout, let us know. Uh, we'll turn it aside for you. You can pick this card up on Friday as well. Cool, excellent. Well, I'm happy we're open money. Woohoo! Money! Uh, Wojo Bodyguard, Dazzling Lights, Healer's Hawk, Child of Night, Prey Upon, Shore Strike, uh, Hammer Dropper, Piston Fist, Cyclops. Boris Signet, Sumala Woodshaper. Okay, Enhanced Surveillance, Mulder Hulk, and, uh, and Disinformation Campaign. So we've opened another good card here. Uh, I'm going to put this Assassin's Trophy here on proud display. Uh, we've opened Aurelia, uh, Exemplar of Justice. So Aurelia is the Boros legend. Uh, she's mythic, she's a legendary creature angel. She's a 2 5 for 4 mana with flying and mentor. So remember, mentor is. Whenever it attacks, put a count, uh, plus one, plus one counter on target attacking creature with less power. But also at the beginning of combat on your turn, she can choose up to one target creature control. Till end of turn, that uh, creature gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and gains trample and is red, and gains vigilance if it's white. So that's quite cool. It works quite nicely with mentor. So it pumps up your other mentor creatures before they do the mentor trigger to put the tokens elsewhere. And you can even put the token on Aurelia as well because she's only got two power. It's quite cool. It's quite. Excellent, plays quite well with the rest of the Boris cards. Also, it's a 4 mana flying 5-5. Five five. That's pretty good. Uh, it can be bigger than that though, so exciting stuff. It really is quite powerful. Awesome, so let's have a look through the next pack. Uh, Fidelcan Mesmerist, Hunted Witness, Never Happened, Wary uh, uh Command the Storm, Maximize Altitude, Maximize Velocity. Okay, cool. Uh, Dowser of Light, Hypothesis All. Uh, Pissilus Gorgon, our uncommons are Golgari Raiders, Inescapable Blaze, League Guild Mage. Again, excellent, we've opened another card that we wanted to. We've opened a Mission Briefing. Mission Briefing is really cool. Uh, so, this card, uh, Surveil 2, then uh, choose the instant sorcery card in your graveyard. Um, you may cast that spell if it's, this, ter if it's uh, this turn. If that would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, exile it instead. So it's avail it's an instant, two mana instant, similar to Snapcaster Mage, you don't get the two one body on it. But 
uh, you get to cast a spell out of your graveyard. Uh, Surveil 2, also quite powerful as well, enabling you to cast more spells. It doesn't target either, so it casts a spell. So if someone exiles something in response, you can do a card. Um, you can cast something else, I believe that's correct. Choose a... And it's, yeah, so it doesn't target, so if they go, oh, like, I don't want you to have the lightning bolt that you're trying to flash back, you can go, okay, I'll flash back this other thing instead when it resolves. Quite cool. Uh, so mission briefing, looking like it's going to be about $8 at the moment. Uh, that might come down from where we go as more packs get opened, but we'll see where we go. So secondary market at the moment, that card's also quite expensive. So our, our, our real winner today is the Assassin's Trophy. But then also I'm going to put this pile, which is our medium sort of price cards as well. We've opened, we've done doing quite well so far out of the pack, out of the box. Uh, so we'll see where we get to with the rest of the cards. Hunted Witness, Failed Shade, Iron Shell Beetle, Wojek Bodyguard, Watcher in the Mist, Healer's Hawk, Celestia Locket, Hammer Dropper, Piston of the Cyclops, Boros Signet, our Uncommons, District Guide, Pilfering Imp, Boros Challenger. Our rare is Erratic Cyclops. So Erratic Cyclops says... Uh, it's a 4 mana 0 8 uh, with trample. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it gets plus X plus O until end turn, or X is the that spell's converted mana cost. <coughs> so it's um, a bigger version of some of the other cards that we've seen. It plays quite well with the, uh, the Is It um, sub theme, which is to cast spells and make your creatures bigger. Uh, a lot of these are cards do similar things to this. This is the rare version, so it's just bigger than everything. So. 4 mana for a 0 8 that can get quite large as well, that's quite cool. So moving forward, 10th uh, dis District Yard, Deadly Visit, Generous Stray, Torch Courier, Capture Sphere, Take Heart, Pause for Reflection, Goblin Electromancer again, Demir Locket, Dark Blade Agent. So the uh, moving on to the uh, Uncommons, Silent Dart, Affectionate Indric, Conclave Guild Mage again. Uh, Mausoleum Secrets is our uh, rare. So Mausoleum Secrets is that same thing again. Uh, it's uh, got the undergrowth and you can search your library. So we already have one of these here. So um, it's uh, search your library for a black card with converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of card, creature cards in your graveyard. Reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle the library. Cool, excellent. I, quite, I like Mausoleum Secrets. I do like a good uh, tutor. Demonic Tutor was a powerful card. Uh, Murder of Secrets is Muslim Secrets is also quite powerful as well, I think. Uh, Severed Strands, Urban Utopia, Shore Strike, Wishcoin Crab, Luminous Bonds, Broodmark, uh, Moodmark Painter, Gateway Plaza, Dowser of Lights, Fresh Faced Recruit, Boris Locket. There are Commons, uh, Arboretum Elemental, Crush Contraband, Join Shields, Midnight Reaper, a Zombie Knight is our, uh, is our rare. I think this card actually might be worth a bit of money. Let's, we'll have to check it out though. So, uh, Midnight Reaper, Zombie Knight, uh, Zombie Knight. Uh, uh, whenever a creature you control dies, deals one damage you, uh, to you and draw a card. Cool, so it's going to replace itself when uh, when it dies, but also if you've got a large, large amount of other creatures out of play, it's going to replace that as well. Cool, uh, I think this card might be quite good, um, but uh, it's a zombie, so it's going to play quite well with the zombies, especially if the zombies keep coming back over and over and over again. Have a quick look at the price list. No, it's not all that expensive, but it is quite nice. It's quite good fun. I'll just leave that there for a second. Uh, it's no Assassin's Trophy, but uh, I don't know that we'll we can cap Assassin's Trophy too easily. But we said this about a previous set and we ended up with a foiled Tesseract. So we'll see where we get to. Uh, right, Barging Sergeant, Demir Informant, Blade Instructor, Seven Strands, Hitchclaw Recluse, Direct Current, Gravatic Push, Piston Fist Cyclops, Celestia Nocket. Garrison Sergeant, Plague Crafter, there are commons, Ochran uh, Assassin, Demir Spybug, uh, there are rare uncommons, I think we must have missed one somewhere, oh well. Uh, Arclight Phoenix is our rare slash mythic. Arclight Phoenix is a uh, 4 mana 3 2 flying haste phoenix uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn. You've cast three or more instant and, or, and sorcery spells this turn. Uh, return Arc Light Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it's a Phoenix, it rises from the ashes once it's dead. Um, okay, so it's going to come back into play. It's got flying and haste, much like every other Phoenix we've seen. Um, it's quite good. It means that people are going to have to remove it from the game in some way uh, instead of uh, 
letting it letting it just die because it'll come back especially if you're casting instant sorceries it's an is it kind of card it's the sort of spell that is it quite likes because you're going to cast lots of instant sorceries the card could be quite good um, especially if you find some way to put it into your graveyard that's not via casting it the first time so if you surveil it into your graveyard you go surveil put this uh, arclight phoenix into my graveyard continue casting instant sorceries assuming your surveil the first one time around was an instant sorcery and then our Cloak Phoenix just ultimately comes back. So it might you might see this coming to play turn three, turn four without actually casting it, which is quite cool. So moving on, Wild Ceratok reprinted again. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Fearless Halberdier, Radical Idea, Loxalon Restorer, Deadly Desert, uh, Devkarin Descendant, uh, Pause for Reflection, Vidani Shield Mate, Unexplained Disappearance, Erstwhile Trooper. Are on Collins Lot Left Giant. I was talking to Frank about Lot Left Giant at the weekend. He thinks this card might be really quite good. So it's got undergrowth. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to target yeah. opponent for each creature it in the graveyard. So if you filled your graveyard up full of creatures and then bring this back into play from your oh bring this back into play from your graveyard or cast it, you're more likely to bring it back into play from your graveyard. So you can fill your graveyard up full of creatures, including Lot Left Giants, bring it back into play. Uh, and it will deal a bunch of damage to your opponent. That's quite cool, so you can just play some sort of dredge deck that wants to put a lot of cards into your graveyard. Underworld, and a lot less giant, it's an uncommon, it might see play in those sort of decks, that's quite cool. That's quite exciting that uncommons are, are, are that good. Uh, World, World Soul Colossus is our next card. Uh, we've got another uh, dual face card, so let's just quickly have a look at this one. Don't break your necks looking at it, please. Uh, so it says invert, search, uh, switch the power and toughness of each of up to two target creatures. Search your library for an instance card and or sorcery card, reveal them, put them into your hand, shuffle the library. Cool, so it's going to flip power and toughness of creatures around, that's a nice combat trick. And it's also going to search your library for more instant sorceries. Cool, exactly what is it wants to do with this bit card. Quite like that card, that's cool. Another uh, Unmoored Ego. So Unmoored Ego once again, three mana sorcery uh, it lets you search your li opponent's library for three cards and get rid of them uh, so for four cards you have to name a card you can search your opponent's library for four cards so quite good against those decks that are trying to win with uh, approach of the uh, approach to the second sun or some similar things so that's quite cool but an approach is not in the format anymore is it because it, it's rotating now. cool goblin locksmith muse drake swan companions burglar rats Prayer Pond, Golgari Locket, Rosemane Centaur, Somala Woodshaper, Dark Blade Agent, District Guide is our first uncommon. Uh, Thoughtbound Phantasm, Price of Fame. I think we've got a foil. So we've got a Temple Garden, that's another good thing. So Temple Garden is our rare. Uh, it's another Shockland. Great news, I love a good Shockland. Uh, like they're, they're always good value. Um, the artwork on this is fairly nice as well. Almost, almost as good as the original Temple Garden, but not quite in there. The original Temple Garden, my favourite artwork. This is really good though, I really like this artwork. Uh, okay, so uh, Demir, Demir Gilgate. Uh, with our foil is Devious Cover Up. I'll just put this here with the medium, medium value cards as well. So Devious Cover Up uh, counter targets four mana for an instant to counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its opponent's graveyard. And we can then shuffle up to four target cards from your graveyard into your library. So that's going to be quite good against the Phoenix, for example. So you can counter the Phoenix, exile it. Excuse me, two seconds. So yeah, Devious cover up, quite a nice foil. Uh, probably goes quite well somewhere in EDH. Um, uh, it's four mana, so it's a little bit expensive for standard. Um, we'll see. We'll see. It might be good enough. We have played four mana. Four mana counter spells before. Normally, if they untap a bunch of lads, I'm going to move this uh, box out of the way because uh, we're almost we're about halfway through, I think, <laughs> slightly more. Uh, so I'll move some stuff out of the way so we've got a few a bit more space to work with. So devious cover up, another one of our foils. Again, don't forget all these cards are available in the weekend Warlords folders. Uh, they'll be available to buy on Friday. Cool. Prayer upon sure strike for Dalkin Mesmerist. Hunted Witness, Never Happened, Wary of LP, uh, Righteous Blow, Sonic Assault, <coughs> Ledev Guardian, Vicious Rumours, and our uncommons are City, Wo City Watch Sphinx, Street Riot, Swarm Guild Mage. Uh, our rare for this pack is Venerated Loxodon. It's 
So Venerated Loxodon says Convoke, um, so you can help cast, for, cast it with your creatures uh, by tapping them. Uh, it's a 5 mana 4-4. Four, four. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, plus, plus 1 plus 1 creature on each creature, uh, plus 1 plus 1 token, sorry, on each creature that's convoked it. So it's going to uh, pump up all those creatures that paid for it. So in a deck that's paying lots of soldiers and elf tokens, tap them all, pay for this venerated Loxodon, all those creatures get plus one plus one counters. That's cool, that's excellent, it's going to pump up your team. Again, uh, probably quite good fun in uh, standard decks. I don't know that it's all that competitive, we'll see where it gets to. Um, but yeah, a nice fun mecha mechanic based card. Cool. Excellent. It's probably the, the Convoke Rare. It's, it's the rare that shows off the Convoke, convoke mechanic. So, um, Bart uh, I'm going to get this one right and see. Bartizan Bats. There we go. Finally got it there. Uh, Wild Ceratoc, Fire Urchin, Vidalcan Mesmerist, Parhelion Patrol, Barrier of Bones, Sumala Woodshaper, Maximize Ve Velocity, Dowser of Lights, Hypothesis. There are commons. Might of the Masses. Crawl Harpoon, another mm -hmm. invert invent. Uh, Experimental Frenzy is our rare. <laughs> sounds, it sounds like an Izzet card to me. Uh, so it is a uh, four mana enchantment. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may play the top card of your library. You can't play cards from your hand and destroy Experimental Frenzy. So basically, it means you're playing off the top of your deck. But you can look at those cards. Yeah, so it basically lets you draw a couple more cards. Um, it's quite cool, it's quite good fun. Uh, I don't know that it's again very competitive, but it is definitely a fun card. Uh, to play, it basically lets, lets you start playing off the top of the deck. Cool, excellent. And if you if it does become a problem, you can always destroy it later. But if you've emptied your hand out and you've got an experimental frenzy, you play it, effectively like drawing a card. Uh, Port Colors Vine, you might draw more cards as well if you can cast them. So, Port Colors Vine, Cosmotronic Wave, Passwall Adept, Take Heart, Dead Weight, Hitchclaw is close, uh, Pissilus Gorgon, Pause for Reflection, Goblin Electromancer, Demir Locket, uh, our uncommons are Thoughtbound Phantasm, Smelt Ward Minotaur, Conclave Cavalier. Our rare is a Boros rare. Uh, so, it's a one mana, two mana for a one one. Uh, it has double strike. Vigilance and Trample though. So what this is, is this is a card that's very good to put enchantments on to put power effects because every power effect, effect it gets basically is doubled from having double strike. But it's also got Vigilance and Trample. Uh, so it's going to be really powerful when it's enchanted. Uh, excellent. So moving on, Hired Poisoner, Crushing Canopy, Wojek Bodyguard, Dazzling Lights, Healer's Hawk, Child of Night, uh, Rose Main Centaur, Pause for Reflection, Whisper Agent, Our Uncommons, Necrotic Wound, World Soul Colossus, uh, Crawl Swarm. Uh, got, oh, we've got a foil. I'm going to keep, keep, keep quiet about what it is because it's quite good. But Tajik, Legion's Edge. Uh, so Tajik is a 3 uh, mana 3 2 with haste. Uh, so uh, with mental. So. Uh, it gets to attack straight away, it gets a mentor power up other creatures. It also says prevent all non-combat damage will be dealt to other creatures you control. So people can't deal damage to a creature with burn spells, similar things. Uh, Tajik, Legion's Eggs gains Legion Edge gains first strike turn of turn. So you give it first strike so it wins in combat. That's quite cool. That's excellent, good fun. Um, it's a good uh, aggressive card. So three mana three three, three two with possibly first strike depends. But the real money in this pack, exciting stuff. We got a foil temple garden. Yes. Um, so saying how much I love the artwork. The artwork is also really lovely in foil. Uh, so a foil temple garden. That's excellent news. That's also worth quite a lot of money as well. Um, so we're doing very well out of our booster pack booster box so far. So uh, I'm quite pleased by that. So we've, so far we've got a Saturn's trophy. A foil temple garden, two other shock lands, a Raylia emission break. <coughs> cool. We're doing well. I would be very happy to open this box myself. Um, don't forget again, all these cards available to buy. Temple garden is going in. Foil temple garden is going in the, in the folders at weekend warlords if you want to buy it. Uh, so disdainful stroke, hunted witness, veiled shade, iron shell beaten, beetle, uh, wojek bodyguard, watcher in the mist, undercity uprising, 
Rosemane Centaur, Selesnia Locket, Dark Blade Agent. There are commons. Moving on. Wand of Vertebrae, uh, Chemist's Insight, Integrity and Invention. It's a Boros split card. I think we've seen this before. Uh, no, we haven't seen this before. Put this over here with the Assassin's Trophy. So we're doing really well. Um, but yeah, this one says uh, white or red. Target creature gets plus two, plus two to end of turn. Quite a reasonable pump spell. Uh, four mana, it deals three damage to any target, you gain three life. So it's similar to um, similar to uh, some of the burn spells that we play in modern, so uh, that's quite good fun. I uh, like that card a lot. Um, it's quite a nice split card. Uh, our rare is Thief of Sanity. Thief of Sanity, a three mana flying 2-2. Two -two. Uh, it's a spectre, so we expect it, expect it to steal cards from our opponent, which it does. So whenever it deals combat damage to a player, look at the top three cards of that player's library, exile one of them face down, put the rest into your graveyard for as long as that card remains exiled. You may look at it, cast it, uh, may spend <coughs> mana as though it was any colour of any, any type to cast that spell. So it's quite similar to Gonti, Lord of Luxury, in that it's going to steal cards off your opponent for you to cast later in the game. But it gets to do it over and over and over, and it's a two mana, a three mana, fl two two flyer. That's really cool. I like that card a lot. So, how many boosters have we got left? We've got seven boosters left. We're almost there. Still running through our our, our box. We've opened a, an assassin's trophy in a foil temple garden. So we're quite happy with what we've opened so far. Uh, Healer's hawk, Bartesian bats. I got it right this time. Wild ceratok, fire urchin, uh, Vidalcan mesmerist, Parhelian patrol. Maniacal Rage, Rhizome Lurcher, Le Dev Guardian, Bigger Spore Worm, our uncommons, Rock Charger, Flight of, Equin uh, Flight of Equinauts, Cackling Drake, Light of the Legion is our rare. So Light of the Legion says uh, Flying Mentor, so it's a 6 mana 5-5, five, five. it's got Flying, it's got Mentor, when it dies put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature you control. Um, which is quite good. Uh, you're going to pump up all your creatures when it dies. Mentor means that it's going to pump up your other creatures as well. Uh, the fact that it's five five power with Mentor means it can power up all those other Mentors as well. Awesome. So more boosters. We've got six more to go. Let's see if we can top a Foil Temple Garden or Assassin's Trophy. Barrier of Blades, Portcullis Vine, Cosmotronic Wave, Passable in Depth, Take Heart, Dead Weight, Mephitic Vapors. Notion Rain, Dowser of Lights, Demir Locket, uh, Selective Snare, Electrostatic Field, Golgari, Golgari Find Broker. Uh, these card names are going to get me in the end, I'm sure. Uh, put that down there. So, uh, Quasi Duplicate. Oh, what a card. That sounds like it's an Is It card. Um, create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. So, three mana to clone something you've currently got in play. Uh, clones normally cost 4 mana, but when that means that they can target anything. But this only targets stuff that you control, so that's 3 mana clone, that's quite good Quite good cost for that sort of effect. Jumpstart, so you can just, it's the jumpstart mechanic again, you can discard a card from your hand to play this card from the graveyard for a second time. So that's quite cool, you get to make 2 copies of creatures you control. If you've got something that's really powerful, you can make more copies of it. While not in, well, including more, so you can have four copies in the deck, and you can have four copies of quasi duplicate in your deck, up to eight copies of the card that you might want, or maybe twelve because it's got jump start. That's quite powerful. Uh, Hitch claw recluse, rubble belt ball, leapfrog, inclus intrusive pack beast, child of night, siege worm, righteous blow, centaur peacemaker, hammer dropper, glaive of the gill pact is our first uncommon, swath uh, cutter giant, uh, crawl harpooner. Excellent news. So, oh, we've got, I've got, oh, we've got a split card foil. That's exciting. Right. So, our rare. Actually, I'll do, our, I'll do our foil first. So, our, our foil is uh, flower and flourish. Flourish. So, flower for a single green or white. You can search your library for a basic forest or plains. And uh, yes, hello there, necrosite. Um, so uh, Flower says that you can search your library for a forest or plain. So you can search your library for a temple garden, put it into your hand, uh, and then shuffle your library. And then the other side of it is creatures you uh, you control get plus two, plus two to lend a turn. Excellent. So um, this card, it lets you search your library for, for, for 
lands, so it lets you fix your mana base. It also lets you fix your mana base into more than just green or white, because you can search your library for basic land, for, for land. Um, as you know, it does actually say a basic forest or plains, I'm really sorry. So you can't actually fix your colours out of green or white, but it does let you get more green or white cards out. So if you're playing green-white deck and you've only seen green mana, but you've got a flower flourish, you can pay, pay green, get a planes out of your deck. So it lets you fix your mana quite nicely. Flourish also works quite well if you're going quite wide in uh, Selesnia as well. Awesome. So that's a foil. We'll put it with the rest of the foils. So. Uh, I'm quite excited about this card. Please don't crane your necks too hard because it's on its side. Uh, so it's Find or Fonati. I really like this card. So uh, so for Find, Sorcery, you turn up two target creature cards in your graveyard to your hand, so that's quite a lot of value. So two mana effectively draw two cards out of your graveyard. And for six mana, you may put uh, two plus one plus one cre uh, counters on creature you control. Then all creatures get minus four, minus four to the end of turn. So uh, for the first half, you can return two creatures, and for the second half, you can kill all creatures. Um, that's great. Also, you get to pump up your creatures as well. So that's really quite powerful. Um, you're going to be able to like kill a lot of things with this spell. Um, it's a nice symmetrical effect as well, so all your creatures can be slightly bigger than that. And then it's not symmetrical anymore. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, find a finality. I'm quite pleased by this card. It's quite a nice uh, rare. Again, I don't know how competitive it's going to be. I would definitely play this in one of my green black EDH decks, though. Uh, quite nice. Quite fun. Remember, all these cards are available weekend warlords uh, if you want to pick them up. So so far, uh, we've got an assassin's trophy, a foil temple garden, two dual, uh, two two shock lands. We've got a mission briefing. We've got an Aurelia, a stack of rares as well. They're all quite good fun. Uh, we've got. got Three more boosters to go, I believe. Uh, so we're almost there. Got this one. Four boosters to go. Command the storm. Maximize altitude. Uh, tenth district guard. Deadly visit. Generous stray. Torch courier. Erstwhile trooper. Is it locket? Garrison sergeant. Goblin electromancer. Okay. More cards to go. So silent dart. Ledev champion. Legion guild mage. Izoni. So I got Izoni in my uh, Golgari pre-release. Uh, and Izoni was quite good, really won me some games, uh, a very good value engine, especially late game. So Izoni is 6 mana for a 2-3, uh, it's got undergrowth, so when it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature token for each creature card in your graveyard. So it's going to make quite a wide board when it enters play. Uh, sacrifice, it also says green and black, sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and draw a card. So it's really good value. You get to sacrifice those insects you've made uh, later in the game. It fills the board up. Um, I also did have a Divine Visitation, this card, that replaces everything with angels. I couldn't quite make this combo work. Um, this combo would have been really quite powerful, but I didn't really have the fixing to do it. Um, but it would have been quite fun had I managed. So Izoni and Divine Visitation. Uh, that was quite the combo, but I didn't get to pull it off, unfortunately. Um, I didn't have enough other token making spells for it to really work well enough but Izoni was quite powerful on its own. I like that card a lot, it's maybe not all that competitive, it probably goes in the dredge deck that wants to reanimate the lot left giants, um, you can also reanimate a, a, an Izoni to make a large amount of 1-1s, one -one. it might be quite good, might be quite fun in a sort of casual standard deck. So uh, we've got two boosters to go after this one, but one more, so three boosters total. Rubble Belt Ball, Leapfrog, Intrusive Pack Beast, Child of Night, Siege Worm, Barging Sergeant, Dark Blade Adept, Gateway Plaza, Dowser of Lights, awesome, so Arbor Arboretum Elemental, Disinformation Campaign, Integrity Intervention, okay we've got Foil, I'll just hide that for a moment, so our rare is Firemines Research. So Firemines Research, uh, named for Niv Mizzet, the Firemind. Uh, it's a two mana enchantment. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a charge counter on Firemind's research. You can remove for t one and a blue, remove two charge counters from Firemind's research to draw a card. Uh, one and a red, remove five charge counters from Firemind's research. It's five damage to any target. So you can put this into play quite early, and then as you cast instant or sorcery spells, as the game goes on, it powers itself up, and you can just take counters off for benefits later in the game. I can see this card being quite powerful in an is it kind of limited deck. Uh, it could be quite fun in um, a standard deck or a modern deck. I don't know that it's all that powerful though. 
It's good fun. I really like it. It's very thematic. It's an is it research kind of card. Um, I could see playing it in EDH as well. It would go quite nicely in a storm deck. Um, but as it stands, I don't think it's all that powerful. But it's quite good. It's good fun. So Golgari Guildgate and an Elf Knight. Awesome. So our, our foil is Crushing Canopy. So I like this card. It's a good sideboard card, I think. So uh, three mana. Just choose one. Destroy target creature with flying. Or destroy target enchantment. So it's because it's nice and flexible. It has two options to use. So uh, you can bring it in against large creatures with flying. Bring it in against enchantment style decks with a tough with tough to beat enchantments. So Crushing Canopy. Quite nice that it's in foil. Um, this card might see a little bit of play somewhere. Um, also. It's quite nice, it's a very nice piece of artwork, it's lovely in foil. Uh, right, so next pack, Capture Sphere, Take Heart, Severed Strands, Urban Utopia, Straw Strike, Wish Coin Crab, Maximize Velocity, Artful Takedown, Pax Favor, Fresh Face Recruit, a lot left, Troll again, that's excellent, more of those. Uh, Grappling Sunju, Wee Dragonauts, Wee Dragonauts have been reprinted, good, excellent fun. Ah uh, yes, we've got a Shockland. So we Dragonauts, uh, an old card from Is It that was printed in the original Ravnica, it's back again. Uh, I'll just put these cards over here. Uncommon. So we've got a Water Grave, another another Shockland. Great news. So another Shockland. Uh, Water Grave taps for blue or black is an island or swamp. Uh, in my opinion, I think it might be one of the best ones. It taps with two of the best colours in Magic. I do love me, me a good Underground Sea. And this one, as Underground Seas go, it's not bad. It goes in, it's even played in Legacy as well. So it's played in the Death Shadow deck. Um, because you want to be playing lands that deal you damage rather than Underground Seas. So Water Your Grave, good, good card. <coughs> Excellent. Goes with our pack, with, goes with our box. We've opened a total of three Shock Lands. Two moderately expensive cards and two really expensive cards. So we've done well out of our booster, our, our, our booster box. This is our last pack. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide the last three cards. One of those is probably going to be a rare. I'll do that one as well, just in case there's a foil. So we'll see where we get to. Right. Disdainful Stroke. Uh, Skyline Scout. Sp Spinal Centipede. Portcullis Vine. Command the Storm. Leapfrog. Fresh Faced Recruit. Boris Locket. Pause for Reflection. Vidani Shield Mate, uh, Crush Contraband and Circusus Roots are uncommons, which means this is probably an uncommon. Yes, it is. Flight of the Equinauts. So, this means that this is our token, a bird illusion. This is our land, which is a uh, Selesnya Goldmine. I've not seen a single basic land, so I believe that they've all been replaced with Guild Cakes. And this is our last rare. It's a Knight of Autumn. Excellent. So, a 3 mana 2 1. Knight of Autumn says when it enters the battlefield, choose one, put two counters on itself, destroy target artifacts or enchantment, or gain full life. It's a really flexible card. Um, so it's destroy target artifacts or enchantment, that's really powerful. That'll see some play in some sideboards for this. It is itself a 4 3 if you want it to be. So that's great, it can be a 4 3. Um, it's quite powerful, 3 mana, 4 3, that's quite a lot of power and toughness. Uh, and then also you gain four life, so if you're in a situation where you actually need to gain that life, it's a very good situational flexible card. But, again, it's no foil temple garden or assassin's trophy. So we've done quite well out of this box. Let us know on the, site, on the comments on our YouTube video for this when we upload it, if you've done better. So we've got, out of our, out of our pack, we've got assassin's trophy, temple garden, out of our box, uh, a sacred foundry, Another Temple Garden, a Water Grave, non foil, an Aurelia Mission Briefing. We've got a big stack of rares. We've done really well. I think that what we've opened here is excellent. Let us know if you do better. Remember, all these cards are available at Weekend Warlords in Loughborough uh, from their folders uh, from Friday onwards. Thank you very much. It's been excellent. Thanks. Cheers. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Thank you. See you soon, everyone. Uh, next set, definitely doing some more. We love you, Nick. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Where did you get your boots?